Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, we are going to talk about the farming professions and how you can use them efficiently and how to use them to maximize your profits when you're farming. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the most common profession that most people have that play Stardew Valley and that is the rancher and the artisan profession. So the rancher will give you an increase in animal products, where the artisan will give you a 40% increase in artisan goods. How do you know if an item is an artisan item? It will simply said underneath the item name. Take for example the edge of fruit wine there for example, it will say artisan goods underneath the name. Let's have a look at our golden eggs here now, and as you can see underneath the golden egg it will say animal product. That's how you know if you have an animal product or not. So the professions that we have at the moment will increase the base cost of these items when we sell them, bringing us in much higher profits than what you would normally get if you didn't have these professions. This is just a quick overview here of the golden egg, 1200 for Neridium, ancient fruit wine, 2310 gold. That's pretty nice. But let's have a look at the Statue of Uncertainty here. And this is something that a lot of people don't use a whole lot of. We're going to use it right now to reset our farming skill. And the great thing about the statue is you can use it as many times as you like, as long as you have the gold, which is 10,000. We're now going to change our professions. We're going to go with the Tiller Artifact here. Crops were 10% more. And this time we're going to go with the Agriculturist, which means the crops will grow 10% faster. Now, the reason why I'm showcasing this profession is because you can combine this with speed grow, greatly reducing the amount of time needed to grow crops. So we're just going to blow up our ginger island farm here now, which is basically hoeing the ground. <laughs> I like to call it hoeing in style. And I'm going to plant red cabbages today. Now these take nine days to fully grow, but we're going to combine these cabbages with our lovely farming park, which gives us a 10% increased growth rate along with hyper speed grow which gives at least 33% growth rate and this means that it, it's going to almost cut the time to harvest seeds in half and that is absolutely huge especially for crops that have multiple harvests if you want to get the most out of a crop during any season take the strawberries for example or the blueberries you know or even take the star fruit to take almost a whole season to grow you can cut them right down in half which means you can grow a lot more per season, bringing you in huge profits. So I'm going to sleep for a few nights here now, and as we can see, it's the 19th, it took four days, and my lovely red cabbages have all grown. If I didn't use the hyper speed grown, if I didn't have the farming pot, these would have taken nine days to grow, uh, which, which is way longer. So that is the benefits of having those farming professions. Now we could sell these red cabbages because I have the, the first perk there that gives me 10% more money. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to process them using preserve jars. And I'm going to show you a tip here now that a lot of Stardew Valley players don't actually utilize. And that is the art of swapping out your professions occasionally based on what you have going on in your farm to maximize your profits. So I'm getting loads of lovely pickled red cabbages here now at the moment. And what we're going to do is, before we sell all these lovely pickled red cabbages, we are going to swap out our professions again, and we're going to get the artisan profession, and then sell them. Now, it does cost 10,000 gold every time you want to change your profession, but you are going to make that back big time, because of the extra profit you're going to get from selling items. As you can see, they're now 798 gold per pickled red cabbage. So we would have gotten much less, you know, we've got we would have gotten 40% less if we sold these without using the artisan profession. So one of the big things I want you to take away from this video is that you should never feel tied down to just two, you know, professions. You should always be going to the statue of uncertainty and changing your professions based on what you were doing in your farm. Let's take a look at the shepherd profession here, for example. Did you know that there's actually a hidden perk with the shepherd profession? that the game doesn't tell you about. And, and what that perk means is that any animal you have in your bar, not only can you befriend them faster, but the quality of items they produce also gets increased. So if you have, for example, you know, sheep there at max out friendship, they have a much greater chance of producing iridium and gold tier quality items than regular quality items. So what I'm doing here now is this is basically um, a few seasons worth of wool. I'm going to sell the Iridium Star, the Gold Star and the Silver Star, but I'm actually going to process the regular wood into cloth, because I'll get more for the cloth. 
Now, I'm not going to sell the cloth straight away. I will respec back into the artisan profession when I decide to sell the cloth. As we can see here now, I'm after getting an absolute ton of money here for selling the wool. 1.8 million. Iridium star wool there, 816 gold, which is absolutely magnificent. Because I get the pork from the rancher, because wool is an animal product. And I get more gold for that. So, the other thing that you need to know about the shepherd profession is that if you have, you know, a sheep on maxed out friendship, they can generate wool every single day combined with the shepherd profession. Next up, we have the coop master profession. This profession also has a hidden ability the game doesn't tell you about. It's very similar to the shepherd profession, where all the coop animals have a much higher chance to produce higher quality items. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell one of our golden chickens. We're going to hatch a new one. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it... We're going to call it subs. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and give this lovely chicken a magnificent start to his lovely new life with his golden chicken family. <laughs> So, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little test. We have 8 coops at the moment filled up to the top of golden chickens. I'm going to sell everything first of all in the auto grabber, so I'm going to reset everything. And then we're going to see the quality of items I get on a weekly basis. So let's start with the first coop here now. 97 iridium golden eggs, only 13 silver, 22 gold. So as we can see here, the majority of times when these chickens laid eggs, they were iridium star eggs because not only are they max friendship, but I also have the Coop Master Profession. Second shed yielded similar results where we got Iridium Star Eggs into the 90s. Third shed more or less the same with 96 Iridium Star Eggs, very low silver eggs, and that's what we want. The fourth shed, we got 95 Iridium Star Golden Eggs. Fifth shed, we got 86. So as you can see, it's very consistent. Let's go into the next shed here, 97. That's a record now at the moment. I wonder, can we get a shed that give us over 100? <laughs> The next one up we have 95, so as we can see here, you know, look at all the eggs we have now, hundreds. 746 Iridium Gosar eggs, that's basically a week worth of eggs right there, 1.1 million gold. And and these are animal products of course, so so that is, that is why you want to be using those professions. If you have a farm filled up with chickens, you're selling golden eggs, make sure you have the, make sure you have the coop master. Next up, we're going to talk about farming tools. Let's talk about the water you can. The bottomless enchant is nice. It means you never run out of water. But there is a much better one. A much, much greater enchant than, in my opinion, you can run as water you can. And I'm going to give another enchant right now and see what we get. Reaching. That's the one that we want. This means that you can water, you can cover a lot more area within a, a much shorter span of time. Let's do the same with the hole. We also get the reaching um, enchantment. So I'm just going to show you the power of the reaching enchantment with the hole. It's a 5x5 five five tile that it's going to cover. And as you can see here, it's not going to take long at all to hold the entirety of this farm on Ginger Island. And it's a pretty big patch you get. So utilizing this method, you can very easily hoe and water this farm on a daily basis. Absolutely no problem. As we can see here, the, the watering can works the exact same way. Look at all those tiles you can water in just one go. And if we do run out of water, it's no big deal. There's water everywhere in this game. So that is basically the enchants. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. I will upload the next Stardew Valley video on Monday. So stay tuned for that. So this video basically covered, uh, you know, the best farming enchants that you can use. It also covered when you should be using you know, specific farming profession. So don't be afraid to go to the Statue of Uncertainty located in the source. Don't be afraid to pay that 10,000 gold and to swap out your professions to match what you're actually doing on your farm to maximize your profits. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.